we welcome our live stream audience. It's good for you to be with us, for us to be of one mind and one spirit. Amen. This is the fourth message in this series on the coming of Christ, second coming of Christ. <clears throat> now from the beginning of God's dealings with men, particularly dealing with them collectively, he taught them about specific days, orienting their thinking. There was under the law the day of atonement. It was a high day. And the scriptures speak of the day of captivity and the, the day of battle and the day of destruction and the day of trouble and the day of visitation and the day of judgment and the day of salvation. See, it's teaching us to think. Amen. All time in this world is not the same. And there's coming a unique period of time. It's called a day. But it's not speaking of its duration. It's speaking of its commencement. It's going to come a time when it's day of the Lord. It's going to start. And everybody's attention is going to be on it. There'll be nobody with a divided mind. No one will be, not be paying attention. It's going to be that kind of day now. Now the days that happen out here in the earth, they aren't like this. There's some of these days people just miss it, like the day of visitation. Some people aren't aware of it, but not this, this day we're talking about here. It's a period of time, as we think, as, in our, as we think. It's a period of time during which certain things are going to be accomplished. God's going to remove, before this day commences in his fullness, God's going to remove all distraction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Heavens are going to pass away with the great noise. Elements are going to melt with fervent heat. The earth and there, all the things in it are going to be burned up. It's going to remove all distraction. So there'll be nothing to turn your head. And it's an appointed time. Now here's a message. Just this isn't preached much in our day by anybody. But Paul spoke wisely when he said, God has appointed a day in which he'll judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. God's appointed a day. It's a day of confrontation. Mm -hmm. Nobody can escape. This needs to be said now because a lot of people don't believe this. A lot of people, the way they live, we know they don't believe this. Mm -hmm. Maybe they might say, I believe there's a day of judgment. Let me tell you right up front. Mm -hmm. A person who's not preparing for the day of judgment doesn't believe it. Amen. If they say they do, they just lied. That's all there is to it. Someone's got to tell them this. That's the kind of day this is. Nobody's going to miss it at all. It's the appointed day. <clears throat> Single time comprised of several events that are going to happen in this day. In Ephesians 4.30, it refers to it as a day of redemption. There's one part of us that hasn't been redeemed yet. <laughs> been purchased that's your body. 
and the changing of your body into a, from corruptible to incorruptible and mortal to immortal, that's going to occur on this day. The day of redemption. The same day now. This is the day of the Lord. He's just looking at it from different angles. It's a day of wrath. I know some people don't think God's capable of wrath. They don't like to hear about God's wrath. He's got wrath. Amen. And he's going to unleash it without mixture Amen. on this day. Woe to the person that lived as though there were no God. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's called a day of salvation. There's a day of salvation. Uh -huh. It's commenced now in Christ. It's going to culminate yeah. in the day of the Lord. It's a day of judgment. Same day we're talking about here. Second Corinthians, Second Peter two nine, a day of judgment. Job talked about a day of destruction. It's a appointed time. It's going to happen. But it's particularly the day of the Lord. It's particularly the day of the Lord. A time when he'll be the absolute focus of attention. Nobody's going to be talking about anything else. No one's going to be looking at anything else. He's going to capture, he, he should capture your attention now. Yeah. If he doesn't, you'll, he'll have it then. Amen. Amen. Absolute attention. His work will be the focus. What he did? All the souls that neglected this work, ignored the work, lived as though it didn't exist, became occupied with other things, are going to face the stark realities. Yeah of what Jesus did. And if when they were in the body, they did not take advantage of this, they will not be a shred of hope. I think this needs to really be placed deeper into the hearts of people. There's too much carnal patience in our day. The day of the Lord is mentioned in the King James Version 21 times. A lot of the, most of the times, as Brother Gene pointed out this morning, are in the old scriptures. And because sin was so dominant, he spoke about this day differently. Because sin hadn't been taken away. And the, the reality of this day and the meaning of this day can't be established if you can't see that sin's been taken away. If you can't see sin's been taken away, this day is viewed com completely different. It's a time when God's going to confront the proud and the haughty. <laughs> what a thought. Confronting the proud and the haughty. They don't think they're being confronted now. The proud and the haughty live like no one really sees them or cares. Not on that day. They'll be confronted. It will not be a pleasant uh, task. It's going to be a time of judgment and Retribution, payback. God said, I'm going to repay. About the time you think more tempted to forget it, I will repay. Day of the Lord, that's when he's going to do that. This is a day of uh, vengeance. Vengeance is mine. Amen. You, you can't take vengeance. Don't ever try and do it. Vengeance belongs to God. But he's going he gonna to take vengeance. This is, the God of the, this is the God of salvation we're talking about here. It's a time Joel said it was a time of destruction. Day of destruction. Of all the natural order. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. 
for his camp is very great, for he is strong and executed his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Yeah, this is the view of those angels. Oh, it's very filled with terror is the idea. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think we ought to scare people like that. Well, you're probably wrong about a lot of other things too. Yeah. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. If you're going to be scared, better to be scared now. When you can do something about it. So the Lord taught men that God will eventually have a day when he confronts all of his adversaries. Even though it looks now like he's silent, like his enemies are being uh, overlooked, people are getting by with things, doing their own will, living as though there was no God. See, but all this is going to end abruptly. In the twinkling of an eye, it's going to end abruptly. And God's going to call his adversaries into account. This message is about the day of the Lord. It's his day. Nobody else is going to be the focus on that day. It's also called in 1 Corinthians 1 8, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the same day. It's also called the day of the Lord Jesus and the day of Christ. <laughs> when Christ appears, and he's going to appear when he leaves heaven. As soon as Jesus leaves heaven, he's going to appear. And all those that think that well, he's going to leave like in two stages, yeah, they're just wrong, that's all. They're just wrong in this. This is not right. When Jesus left heaven the first time, he appeared on earth. When he leaves the second time, he's going to appear. That's, what, that's what's going to commence the day of the Lord. The appearance of Christ will commence the day of the Lord. There's not going to be any arguments presented. No one is going to have an opportunity to justify themselves or explain why they lived the way they did. God's going to do all the talking. Amen. That's the way it's going to be. It's the day of the Lord. And really what salvation is all about is getting ready for that day. That's right. <laughs> now I want to dwell for a while here on how this day belongs to the Lord and he's going to be the center of attraction the moment this day starts the damned are all going to know they're damned yes. they're going to know mm -hmm. would to God they would cry for rocks and mountains to fall on them they, they're going to know Amen. everybody who's not ready is going to know right. now it's my uh personal persuasion that prior to the passing of the heavens and the earth and Jesus coming, things are going to kind of start winding down. It's going to come to the point where everybody's going to know this is it and we've not got any oil. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And they're going to find out too bad. Mm -hmm. We may be living in the start of that, I don't know. Things are kind of, kind of winding down. Get, God's getting ready for the focus, the spotlight on him, on His Son, and consequently on Himself. Yeah. This, see, this really is where the spotlight belongs. Yeah, that's right. Amen. It belongs on God and Christ. Amen. This actually is what the church is supposed to be doing. Right. It's supposed to be turning the eyes of people toward God and Christ. Telling them what God's going to do with people that have rejected him and announcing to them who are interested that there has been a provision to be ready for this day. And I'm telling you right up front, the church isn't doing this. No, I'm not saying nobody is. I'm saying this is, but that person here is nobody. You have to travel far and wide 
to find someone that's declaring this in such a way as to shake sinners up. Amen. There have been days of history where people shook and cried and called out the name of the Lord and just about died on the spot because they thought Jesus was coming. Been a long time since anything like that's happened. Yeah, right. Why? It's a different kind of thing being preached today. Yeah. There's a gospel being preached today in which God is not everything. Yeah. Right. And Christ is not everything. Mm -hmm. But see, in the day of the Lord, mm -hmm. <laughs> the assembled universe is going to find out God is everything yeah. and Christ is everything. Yeah. And those who didn't think this were just wrong and not cost them their soul. Yeah. They've given their soul in exchange for a delusion. Yeah, this is the day of the Lord. Now, in the day of the Lord, everything's going to be seen in comparison with deity. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a horizontal comparison. Everything's going to be seen in view of God and Christ. And oh, how foolish a sinful life will appear. Yeah, that's right. How foolish self-centeredness will appear. Yeah, yeah. When they're in all, Jesus is going to appear in all of his glory, the glory of the Father, the glory of the holy angels. There isn't going to be any other kind of glory. Yeah, that's right. 1 Corinthians 3.13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day, the day shall declare it. The, the day. <laughs> now, if you're living for the Lord, this is a piece of good news. But as soon as the glory of the Lord appears, everything's going to be seen in crystal clear light. That instant, that instant everyone's going to see things like they really are. There won't be any distractions. The heaven and the earth will be passed away. There won't be any distractions. And that day, going to declare what God's been talking to people about for the last 4,000 years in Christ. He's been telling them through the apostles and through the prophets, through faithful messengers, he's been telling them, there's a day coming, there's a day coming. There isn't going to be any chance after that day. The day is going to declare it. Well, I just like the language. The day shall declare it. Amen. See, life is really about God. It's not about you. Amen. And when people devise a gospel that focuses in, on, around people, they've made a strategic blunder. Because this God doesn't focus on just people. If you talk about who God focuses on, it's on his son. See, why doesn't he focus his attention on the world? Because the world couldn't stand such a view. The world couldn't survive such a view. See, he's provided for his son to stand between him and the earth. His son sent out apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to stand, kind to mitigate the vision of what we got here. Because if the Lord ever looks at Sodom, he'll do something about it. If the Lord ever looks at the Tower of Babel in construction, he'll do something about it. If he looks at the world as filled with violence, he'll do something about it. So he's not focused on mankind. He's provided for mankind, but his focus is on his son. That'll be made clear when he comes in the day of the Lord, when it comes... God has positioned all people. Paul told the Athenian philosophers, we've got an enormous amount of philosophy in our day. But there's not this kind of preaching to these philosophers. God positioned men in time and geographically so they would seek the Lord, that they would feel after him, if happily they might find him, for he'd be not far from every one of us. That's man's vocation. Yeah, amen. That's what men are supposed to be doing. That's right. All men are supposed to be doing this. Amen. Remember when Paul reasoned with Felix? He reasoned with him about righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Remember that? Yeah. 
What, what was that? Listen, you have to be righteous. Yeah. You have to be. That's right. That's right. If you're going to survive the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, you've got to be righteous. Yes. You can't say, I'm pretty near I'm righteous, or I'm a little bit righteous, or I want to be righteous. You have to be righteous. He reasoned with about temperance. You have to control your life. You have to do it. You're like, I can't. You, you can't? You mean God commanded you to do it, and you say, I can't? He reasoned with about righteousness. You have to be righteous. He reasoned with about temperance. You have to control your life. If your life was out of control, let it be not one second past tonight. Yeah, Get it in control. Yeah. Amen. How am I going to do it? That's what salvation's all about. Yeah. Amen. I don't have any countenance of these people that teach people that Christians lose control of their lives. I, I don't. I hate this. I loathe it. I got to control myself to be polite. When talking about it, because this just is not the case. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. See, God's provided a way for you to keep under your body and bring it into subjection. That's First Corinthians nine twenty-seven. So life is really about living for God, and God has purposely stated it told you the requirements of it so you will see the need for Christ. Yes. If you take God's demands seriously, mm -hmm. then you'll see the reason for Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. The day of the Lord, that's when all this is going to be declared openly. He'll come as a thief of the night, not, that doesn't mean secretly. Yeah. Come as a thief because he's going to come to take away Everything people have trusted in that's not him. Yeah. Before this day of the Lord gets really underway, he's going to remove everything that can be shaken. That includes the stars in the universe yeah. and all the works of men. It's all going to... Yes. Just to prove to you it wasn't all that important in the first place. That's going to make see, that's going to be like an exclamation mark. Yeah. See, I told you the truth when I said, "Don't set your affection on things on the earth." I, yeah. Don't do it. I told you the truth when I told you this. Yeah. Now it's gone. Yeah. And if your affection was on it, now where are you at? Yeah. Now you're in a situation where you want something you'll never be able to get. Yeah, that's, right. that's one of the uh, great frightening things about hell. Yeah. Nobody's going to be able to get anything they want, yes, yeah. yet the want is not going to be reduced. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be like the worm that dies not and the right. fire is not quenched. Now the day of the Lord is going to make this clear. This is the way it is, see? Here comes a thief in the night to take away unexpected, unexpectedly, Tonight, there are people in the world that are making all kind of plans for tomorrow and for the rest of the year that do not include God. Big mistake. The day is going to declare it. When the day comes, it comes a thief in the night, unexpected. Take all those things away, and there they'll be standing naked before the Lord of glory. It could not be the day of the Lord if it was secret. Yeah. You couldn't call it the day of the Lord if it was secret. Yeah. I'm sorry, the doctrine of the rapture is just an old wise fable. Yeah. That's all it is. So why do they, well, well, the Greek word means caught up. Well, yeah, but the, the power is not in the Greek word. The power is in the doctrine. Yeah. Caught up doesn't mean snuck out. That's right. Amen. Not what it means. It means we're going to be this. What it says, caught up together. Uh -huh. First, the dead will be raised. Uh -huh. Then we, they're alive and remain. Uh -huh. See, there's going to be an entire generation that will not die like most people do. There's going to be an entire generation that won't die in the normal 
manner. <laughs> and I've been changing the moment in twinkly night, the last time, poof, there it is. Yeah. Everything temporal is gone. Amen. That's how everyone's eyes going to be able to see him come, see, because they're not good. It's not going to be these eyes. Ponder what is said now about that day. Isaiah, Isaiah spoke about it. He said, the proud will be brought low. There won't be any more headlines promoting people. Proud are going to be brought low. In an instant now, when this day commit, this is all going to happen in, a, in an instant of time. Proud is going to be brought low. For the day of the Lord of hosts will come upon everyone that is proud and lofty and everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Now, we haven't started judgment yet. Just a day, just a day. Just the appearing of the Lord, all this is going to... Everybody's going to know, see... The purpose of the day of judgment isn't to announce who's saved and who's lost. That's going to be known right off the bat. Sheep and the goat are divided right, right away. So that's not, that's not the purpose. The day of judgment is to vindicate God. That God was right when he said what he did about himself and what he said what he did about the world. He was right. He was righteous. And it looks like People have tampered with what he said and pretended like he wasn't right, but he was right. And the day of judgment is going to allow God to overcome because he's been judged. Everybody who's disobedient to God has judged God. They've said as much as that God is not true. God has determined no one is going to get by with this. Now salvation... What's his name? Provides for men to escape from this uh, to the Lord. Flee to him for refuge till they hold on the hope set before them. Everyone's going to be brought low. Every probably brought low. And in 1 Corinthians 5 5, Paul made this arresting statement. He talked about this fornicator. He told Corinth, Get him out, get him out, get him out, get him out. Turn them over to the devil. Why? Sin is of this nature. There comes a time when certain sin, the saints have done all they can do. They can't do anything more. But God can. So these kind of people, it's going to be hard now for some to receive. I know this. But I'm going to tell it anyway because this is the way it is. When you deliver some over to the Satan, you just, that's it. We're done. We're done. And the person is thrust out into a spiritual desert where the only, that God is the only one that can have discussion with him. That's the reason for this. There's some people we've been dawdling around with too long. We haven't given up hope. But there comes a time if you labor in vain, well, you gotta, you got to back off of this and do what the Lord said. Turn them over to the devil. What does that mean? I'm not sure all that's involved there. I'm not, I don't know what all is involved there, but I don't want to be in that category. <laughs> I don't want anyone to have to deliver me over to the devil to wake me up. Then he says, why? So his spirit can be saved in that day. It so happened that fornicator did repent. Not because of anybody at Corinth. That's why he repented. It's because God got him out there in the wilderness all by himself. And he dealt with him, and the man, praise God, woke up and come back. I said, some people got to be treated this way. You got to have the courage to treat them this way now. So the spirit, the important thing is that when Jesus comes, this person, if this person isn't saved, when Jesus comes, he's never going to be saved. So we have, sometimes we have to take drastic measures. We have to just say, well, Lord, we've done everything we can do. We talked to them. We exhorted them. We preached them. We told them the gospel. We forbore them. We were good to them. So Now we're not even going to eat. Yeah, that's right. Not even going to eat with them. 
nothing to do with them. We're not going to withdraw any kind of Christian influence. We're going to withdraw from them any kind of Christian influence. That's what this text in 1 Corinthians 5 means. If you withdraw any kind of Christian influence, God took the case over, and, and you know the rest. The man did, did repent. Now, the day of the Lord, here's some things that's going to happen. In the day of the Lord, those that have made converts are going to rejoice in their converts. Now, there's this lingering thought that we're not home yet. <laughs> yeah, no guarantees now. So we're, we rejoice when a sinner comes to Christ. But we don't rejoice like there's not going to be a, a battle up ahead and so forth. But in the day of the Lord, well, here's how uh, Paul put it in 2 Corinthians 1.14. As also we have acknowledged, you have acknowledged us in the past that, that we are your rejoicing, even so ye are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. That's when, that's what I'm going to rejoice, Paul says. I mean, think of how many people have been led to Christ by Paul. It's still going on. That's right. yeah. Amen. He's going to rejoice. Mm -hmm. These will be the ones that made it through the fire, see? Mm -hmm. They made it through the furnace, see? So we're glad for those that turn to Christ, and thus we ought to be. But it's not to be compared with in that day. Mm -hmm. We'll rejoice over the ones that made it to the other side. And right now, there's preparatory work being done for that day. <clears throat> Philippians 1 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. <laughs> yeah. You see, well, how come it says until the day of, Jesus, of Christ? Well, because in the day of Christ, all opposition. Phew, it's gone. All threat, all danger. Mm -hmm. yes, it's gone. And, we're, and God's able to continue the work up to that day. If, he, if the work continues to that day, you're in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that good to know? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So what if it stops? Well, that, it'd be your fault if it stops. The work stops and you quit believing because God works through your faith. He works through your faith. And as you believe and you continue, God will finish the work. Yes. Amen. Which means it's not finished yet. Yes. We're all a work in progress, you understand. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean a lot of old stuff stays. Mm -hmm. yeah. It means a lot of new stuff comes. Amen. It's quite, quite, <laughs> quite a bit of difference. Our present commission will end then. Things we're told to do now, it'll be over. Philippians 1.10 says that ye be approve things that are excellent. Do you approve things that are excellent? Or, or, or do they escape your attention maybe? They get by you. Something's excellent. And it escapes your attention. That ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere. Mm -hmm. Sincere means just, just that doubt and fear and so forth isn't, your life is not mixed with those things. There's a purity about your life. Sincere and without offense. I say without offense. Amen. Did you know, well, brethren, that tonight when you go to bed, you can go to bed absolutely perfect. You just confess your sins. Tell me this is the truth now. You confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you fold your hands and you go to sleep. Now you'll have to do the same thing tomorrow. But then I'm glad to hear this. And you can. You can be absolutely spotless. Right now, you'd be absolutely 
spotless and without offense. But the secret is until the day of Christ. That's, <laughs> that's a secret. So we've mentioned this recently that there's a kind of a blight on the Christian community. I call it the now I've got it blight. I've got it now. I mean, I, I got it. For some people, it's the baptism of the Holy Ghost of the evidence of speaking in tongues. They say, I got it now. I got it. Yeah, for other people, it's, a, it's sanctification. I don't sin anymore. And just the Nazarenes. I don't sin anymore. So I've, I've got it now. I finally arrived. See, but you'll not be able to say that until the day of Christ. And all the salvation provides the resources to, to maintain this status, thank God, a day at a time. You don't have to do this a century at a time. Well, 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 well what if you had to do that? A century, each block of time was a century, but no, it's each block of time is a day. Want to get down to it an hour or a minute. And the faithful, oh, we get happy here. We rejoice here. But you've not seen anything yet. Till the day, Philippians 2.16 says, holding forth the word of life, that is, holding out where you can get hold of it, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Oh, boy, that's going <laughs> to... I don't want to preach anything wrong. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to deliver, to deliver a hope to people that's like a wisp that fades away. Yeah. Paul says, I'm a preaching that I can rejoice in that day. Yeah. Gee, it's a frightening day to anybody else. It's the day of the Lord. I mean, heavens and earth are passing away. The elements melt, melting with fervent heat. And here's this body of people over here. They're rejoicing. This is our God. We've waited for him. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. That's what living is about. For that purpose. Uh, but for the wicked, this is the day of the Lord. I'm telling you things that happens at the day of the Lord. See, a lot of things happen at the day of the Lord. First Thessalonians 5, 2, and 3. Yourselves know perfectly. I mean, you know this perfectly. The day of the Lord shall come with us a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, we got it now. We got the armed forces built up. We're the most powerful nation on the earth. We got a good arsenal. And they shall say peace and safety then. Sudden destruction cometh on them as a travail upon a woman and they shall not escape. See, that's the day of the Lord he's talking about. That's the day of the Lord. So what is the re a day of rejoicing for one is a day of terror for another. Heavens and the earth are going to pass away, Peter said, with a great noise. That's going to happen on the day of the Lord. See, nothing about the day of the Lord is hidden. <coughs> nothing about the day of the Lord is secret. There's not going to be anything about Jesus that's not clearly seen. Amen. Everyone's going to understand who he is. Everyone's going to understand where he comes from. Everyone's going to understand that he's almighty. They're all going to know all this. Some are going to be ready for it, and some aren't. Now enters the church, the pillar and ground of the truth. Its purpose, get people ready for this time. Yes. Amen. Make sure nobody within your influence is ignorant about the day of the Lord. Because it's not coming. The day shall declare. Amen. What a thought. This will be the ultimate confrontation that no sinner will be able to avoid. Yes. It'll be the ultimate confrontation that all true laborers have longed for. Sometimes they haven't been understood. They've expended their efforts. They've labored for the Lord, and they haven't been appreciated. And I know you don't want to let this weigh you down, but it is, it is a weight. Yeah. But in that day... They'll see you too. Yes. Everybody see you too. Amen. Just like you are. When he shall be revealed, 
we shall also appear with him in glory. See? When the Lord is fully seen, and not, not until then, then you'll be fully seen. <laughs> in the meantime, as an individual, try and get out of your life anything that distracts from who you are in Christ. You get shed of it. It's not our job to be policemen in this, and you know, we, this isn't our work. But the Lord says, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord. That's your commission. Amen. Rule your body. Rule it. Rule it. If your body wants to drag its feet and have a case of what my grandfather used to call the mully grubs, yeah, but you always down the mouth. You know, always down the mouth. Uh -huh. Come on now, wake up. Yes. Amen. Just wake up. Put on the garments of salvation. Yeah. Get ready for the coming of the Lord. You've got no right to be cast down. Yeah. Amen. Even though I know time's coming, we are. We try and get out of that condition as quickly as we can because it's hard to prepare for the coming of the Lord when you're crawling around on your belly like a snake on the ground. It's hard to get ready for the coming. So that's one of the purposes of our gatherings. Help to bolster us. Get us built up. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Be not weary in well-doing. In due season, we'll reap. We'll reap, brother. We'll reap if we faint not. Amen. He that goes forth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. How will weep but may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Amen. That's the day of the Lord we're talking about. Amen. And I give thanks. Yes. He said so much about it. Brother Jason has our exhortation tonight.